take a piece of gold to show it to Jelani and then you make it disappear. Mm. So I'm gonna explain the big game here. Should I just smear it on my face, on the beard? Read between the lines and see behind the curtain. You're gonna see what's going on with Vlad. I've seen a million kilos. I've never seen a Royal Canadian Mint. He is walking around with 24. I gotta look out for my clients. the cherry on this little gold kilo. That's turning up. These are my profits. In 2006, you're seeing the numbers. Five cent bag, well, a couple houses worth of gold into it. Hello? Bank? You're defaulting? No, I'm just kidding. Just for more stunts, right into the bud right there. I only beat you up one time, can we let it go? <laughs> 41, then it went to 34. Right, I had some losses, and it went to 62, 72. Man, I've been fucking hustling for 18 fucking years straight. I know this business inside and out. He's having a laugh. He's having, he's looking at that gold. He wants a piece of. He's 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 all the way in the back. You got to read the body language. He wants a piece of the action, but it's not happening. Not with Vlad right there. That's what the jewelry business is all about: sourcing materials, production. There's so many tire kickers and low lives in this business and in this world. That's really what this show is about. If I could pull this business off or not. And you're gonna see how I do it if I do. I hide nothing. I don't need to hide anything. I know how to use the truth as a weapon. This is not the reality that's scripted reality. This is indeed reality. Police! Police! Don't call the police! So I heard there was just a scuffle. Somebody tried to steal a watch. They pushed him up to a, a UPS truck. Did you guys hear what happened? Somebody stole a watch. There was a whole beef and that. No? no, no you missed no. it? Somebody accidentally. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful day. As soon as the beauty, uh, the beautiful day comes out, the crime starts, right? It's always like that. Summertime, and this summertime is going to be a real hot one. China has been locked down for like two, three months. So what happens is we're going to feel the effects of that in a couple months later. No, no, um, what is no container. Containers, no shipping containers are being shipped. All the goods are stuck in China because they're in a sick lockdown. So all those goods, it's gonna be a huge pipeline. So not only is recession in full swing mode, we're gonna be short on goods. Gas is gonna go through the roof. No more stimulus. I really feel that this summer, the crime is gonna be crazy. Um, you can just feel it. So Max texted me last night about two o'clock in the morning. He had an idea for a video and he asked me to get him gold. Hey, how you doing? We're going to pick up two kilos in in bars and one kilo in grain. So three kilos total. And we're going to get some chains. All right, so we're going to do a quick pickup and go right back to the office so Max can shoot some videos and, and get it going. Straight from Peru. Secret vault. Hello, hello. You still have the building and everything for it? Yeah. All right, so we're picking up these bars on trust, right? We've been doing a lot of business with, 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 with Isaac here and he's, we have a good relationship where he allows me to take kilos whenever I need. Looks like this is two one ounce pant bars for the store. These are going in bezels, whether they're diamonds or the Versace motif on tracksmc.com. I'm buying this kilo here, that's why I'm signing for it. This is an actual invoice slip, this is kind of a pickup slip. Okay, so there's that, I'm signing for the one ounce bars. And then I got these chains, okay, in the lengths that I need them, the 24, the 22, the 26s. Boom, so you got about 60 something thousand, another 55,000 here, another 60, another 60, and another 2,000 each. So it's a good pickup here. These chains are made in Peru. Really good links, right, Isaac? These are really good links. They sit well. I have a small curve there that's acceptable, but the links are really great, right? And that's why we, we're using them much better than paying the huge premium for Miami Cuban chains with the VIP stamp. We'd rather get these at a smaller premium and pass the savings on, down to the customer, right? That's where we're, we're using these. What's the, what's the difference? You're saying these are Peru, right? Well, the difference is back in the day, Miami, they, they would make the best Cubans by hand and whatever else. But um, now technology is caught up. They're either doing halfway with machine, they're doing the rest by hand, they're making them overseas. Labor in Miami went up, labor overseas went down. 
right? And the quality is right up to par, so there's no need to get them from Miami anymore when we can get them overseas. Close up, I'm, I'm staying the jeweler too. Um, I think you'd be alright. Jeweler beer. Yeah, I know. We could destroy a lot of people's careers real easy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? That would be a lot of fun. Man. Let's see if it's real. Yeah, but they are a little cloudy. They're and that's what I said. Did you clean it? Yeah, and I cleaned it. I steamed it. Yeah, that's not right. I don't it know. should Some look like. It is yeah, it should look like that. If Yo, they, imagine if that. You better keep that motherfucking camera rolling. Because <laughs> <laughs> if that goes, what color does it go? If it's, uh, oh, well, we'll talk about the hardness yeah. scale. So if we see if it gets to the top of the hardness scale. What does that mean? Wow. Yeah. Well, it's. it's, it's, Woo! it's <laughs> Like you, bro. <laughs> no one gets so excited. Hold on, wait, turning on. It's turning on. Alright, hold on, hold on. Does it have to do it? It's good. It's good right now, alright? Alright, so the thing is, it's supposed to say Sally, yeah, it's diamond. Okay. It is? Okay. okay. We can all relax. It's good. It's good. We can all relax. We can all relax. We was ready. <laughs> so it's just whack ass. Stones then. Yes. That I could say that it is. It's not the uh, great diamonds. I shouldn't even wear this shit on. Mm -hmm. You should do a giveaway with it for your fans or something. That was nice. That's a nice idea. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Say, hey, I'm, I'm not with this I want uh, quality stones anymore. <laughs> and, um, some, <laughs> some one of you out there that's trying real hard should have it. My whole life. But then how are you going to shit on it? No, you shouldn't. Get out, like, right after. Yeah, you can do it exactly. on the low. I mean, you got to figure that out on your yeah, own. Yeah, but they, yeah. be, they should be happy with anything. I mean, you enjoyed that bracelet for a while, but now you stepped it up. That's it. Yeah, definitely did. That's right. We, we, we don't but know. But that's what, what happens when you have a great fing jeweler that's not trying to fing rape you with no Vaseline. I'll actually tell you shit, knowledge, you know, keep you knowledgeable on your purchases, on your stones. When you're buying jewelry, you do have to take the time to know what the fing you're buying. Well, Half especially with Erica, because I don't want to get beat up, you know? Stop like, saying I, that. I only beat you up one time. Can we let it go? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One time. Psychologically, it's more than once. Oh, I'm gonna be ignorant with both of my watches today. Oh, yeah. really? Well, let me put it on for you. Wait, will it scratch up with this? Yes, it will. Yeah. Show them my beautiful piece. Right this is there. another piece that I was yeah, able to get. Plain Jane, real deal, with the papers in the box. Okay, and this is the way it looks. This is perfect for her on her wrist. And yeah, you. Won't, I did want to go bigger, but they told me. No, this is perfect. I don't have to have guy watch for everyone. Yeah, you don't. You really don't. I mean, this is a nice watch on you, but it's a little bit big and it's a little bit you know. Everybody's is, been saying that, yeah. but I say. Yeah. Yeah. The bigger, the better. I just feel like because I have big hands, that I should have a big watch, whether I'm a girl or not. This is a good size, yes. oh, but I do low key want it bigger. I told you. Really? So Erica's here for her anklet. It's uh, in addition to her rock collection. No one's doing the, tennis anklets like you are. Well, I would Let's say. Let's keep it real. Well, thank you, Charlie. Right? That's a beautiful look out here in New York when you're and stepping. And I also bought some more shit. Right? I'm going to send you a Zell. You cool with that? Yep. Rocks right here. Um, you know, the whole, the whole thing. She got it. Just walk up to Tracks NYZ and fucking send them a Zell and then I'm just lit all over again. I came in lit and I leave lit here. Yeah, see, see how that works? I see. Come on. Where's the squirrels? They're home. You got the gold? So we're gonna do a quick assay test on everything. So RCM Royal Canadian Mint, I believe. Yeah, these kilos you never really. I've seen a million kilos, I've never seen a Royal Canadian Mint. It's a little bit different. You can see there. But combis, we've seen a million. Yeah, got a cool little etching. Some say this is the most underpriced asset out there in the market right now. Same price as before the pandemic, mostly. It's absolute fraud, it's absolute lie. So. Keep that in mind. 22 karat gold, fantastic. Appreciate the business, sir. Thank you, I got a nice little 22 piece uh, right here myself. Yeah, man, I mean, um, I love 22 karat myself. I'm always wearing them. So when he came in and he really wanted something unique and different, you're not gonna see this types of links. This one especially, it's a very fancy link. I don't know if you can pick it up on camera. 
you know, especially with all the metal prices going up, I mean, we know that what's going on with Russia right now, they're one of the biggest suppliers of nickels, actually. So after the whole sanctions and everything, not just nickel, but all metal prices are really going up. So he came in, he really wanted some heavy, heavy, nice pieces. This one right here is 114 grams. And the thing about it, I know you can't tell on camera, but if you want to go and pop this in your hand, it's so dense compared to 14 karat or 10 karat. The density that, if, that it is in your hand, it's, it's insane. I was looking actually to Instagram. On Instagram? I passed by a couple of times to the yeah. store. And I see it's almost the only one store in New York City that have 22 color. Probably one or two store. On yeah, the, so they, yeah, not a lot of people um, get 22 karat. One, because it also depends on like the demand. You know, maybe we don't really have a lot of 22 karat demand here. But if you know the right people, you know, I mean, I, I know where I can get a hold of these chains at an amazing, amazing price as well. So we're able to make it happen. You want to wear it right now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. You're going you're gonna to enjoy this feeling, I promise you. Let me help you put this on. Yeah. It's an s lock, you know. Um, so it's, it's very, very tight. You're going to have to bend the metal a little bit mm -hmm. for it to get through. And once I put it back over, I'm going to bend the metal back in yeah. place. So that's the, way it's, that's the way it stays. So, and this one's a standard lock or standard lobster clubs. Yeah, so this, this, is, this is a lot easier to put on, right? So the one, this one right here, this one's about 94.1 grams exactly. And this one right here, this rope. The rope chains in 22 karat are made a lot more more heavier so this one is about i think 111.7.6 grams dude in those two chains you have more weight than everything on my neck combined the, the, i'm telling you the two, the color is amazing. <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll, tell me about it man that's what i love then we have to put something like um, the, a custom pendant so if you if you put a modify if you put a custom pendant on the rope chain it's going to hang a little bit like yeah. this so the other one and the pendant combine. right so this one is going to sit a little bit more properly and because it's thicker it's going to sit a yeah. little bit higher anyways because that's more surface area well, that's amazing. i'm like glad that. man i'm glad i'm gonna get you a nice box and everything downstairs Thank in a bag you. obviously you got it yep. Yep. all right so we're popping the cherry on this little gold kilo and you can have your kilos as bars hold on i gotta take this call hello Bank, you're defaulting. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Central bank, you And then you got grain, right? It's hard to put your finger in there. This ain't the, you know, they look like nerds back in the day. You ever heard those? Oh, hell yeah. Those nerd kids. Oh, we got to get some nerds and we got to put them side by side. <laughs> Hundred. I'm gonna break down the game real easy. There's Vlad, he's got a big bar, he's f***ing flexing it because these things could get heavy. Everyone's smiling, take a look at this guy's eyes, how oh, he's looking at that gold. He's having a laugh, he's, having, he's looking at that gold, he wants a piece of, he's, he's, he's all the way in the back, you got to read the body language, he wants a piece of the action, but it's not happening. Not with Vlad right there. So I'm going to explain the big game here, all right, as best as I can. It's a very big game. It's an article on Forbes. It's intended to explain a story, but if you read between the lines and see behind the curtain, you're going to see what's going on with Vlad, right? His boy right here is looking at the bar. They're all laughing, having a good time. He's got a monstrous bar of gold in his hands. This is a kilogram right here, so I don't even know how much that is. It's probably, who knows? Russia Central Bank has $640 billion a day. I mean, $640 billion total in gold reserves, okay? 600 billion is the price, that's not the value. They're betting something else on the value. And uh, what does that amount to? Well, they're selling about 600 million a day in uh, petrol outside into the global economy, which is 10% of the market. So. You dig it up out of the ground, you pay the workers, they're, you know, $300 a month in Russia, you pay the expenses for the land, which is free, you pay for the factory, whatever it is, and you sell for $600 million a day, and that's just 10% of the, the big ticket out there, which is $6 billion a day, whoever the Saudis are making, now you can afford, now you understand why you could afford to build a skyscraper every day in Dubai. 
you know, with uh, six hundred billion dollars or uh, you know uh, six billion dollars a day, every day you got to put that money somewhere. Rolexes, Schmolexes, so on and so forth. Those dollars are floating around, and they're printed cash. Now the problem with that is, is that he, Vladimir Putin, doesn't want to sit there and work for U.S. dollars for the rest of his life. Right, because the oil and everything in the world is traded in dollars. That gives America, it takes it off the hook, it could print the money for the world. It's a, f a fantastic opportunity for the United States that if they were able to have the sense to hold that position, this land would be a land of prosperity like no one has ever seen. Instead, what they've done is they've pillaged this country by, by taking the Federal Reserve where the money is printed and instead of using that money to invest and secure a global empire that could last a thousand years, they robbed it uh, with Halliburton and with, uh, uh, you know, this COVID shit. Obviously, Vlad's not too interested in, uh, you know, uh, financing uh, with his oil America's, uh, you know, a theft. And neither is China. So them, the reason why they got $640 billion in gold is them and China are working hard to push the United States dollar off a cliff, pull out their gold, take the price from 640 to the actual value that it's going to be relative to the dollar and uh, it's going to be a whole dog and pony show so that's really what this is about that's uh, the way i see it now you guys understand you know the big game take a piece of gold you show it to jelani and then you make it disappear mm. should i just smear it on my face on the beard? <laughs> is that a, is that an idea? <laughs> Just for more stunts. Right into the bud right there. So, was fine. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. The 24K man. It matches. <laughs> 24K, bro. <laughs> You're more right. But he is walking around with 24. Gold. gold is non-corrosive, it doesn't react to anything, that's why it lasts forever. It only reacts, with, has a chemical reaction with one other thing, which was some sulfur type shit, but... Gold will just enjoy and enjoy. It's gold, baby. It was designed that way. That's the whole point of it. So one thing is when you're buying American gold, okay, you have an IRA. So like there's Roth IRAs where you can put things into your account and then you don't touch them and they appreciate over time you don't pay the tax on them or something like that there's rules to it right so you can only do that with American issued gold so if you buy the Eagles or the Buffaloes you can do that you can add that gold to your IRA and use it whereas you can't add you know Australian Canadian or any other uh, type of gold to your IRA so that's one of the main advantages of buying the American coins because you can add it to the IRA So what you're looking at here is about 12 ounces of fine gold. Now the customer's chain is about 580 grams in 14K gold. So we all know what we do is 580 and we divide that by 58.5 in order to see how much fine gold we're gonna need to make his chain. And if we equals that, we need about 9.9 .9 ounces. The reason why we're giving him 12 ounces, what do you need? You need more gold to cast the piece for the spruces, for this, for that. And then you're gonna get that gold back, right? So my piece is supposed to have 10 ounces, I'm giving him 12 ounces. I'm giving him a, lect a little extra gold so he can do the casting, do the process, and then I'm gonna get all that gold back, recycle it, or he's gonna give me credit. Either way, we're gonna do it at the market price. So let's say if I bought this gold at $2,000 and it dips $100 while I'm making my chain, guess who's out? Me. So I bought that gold at 2,000. Right? But if I, if I had not bought that gold at 2000, I'd be at the mercy of the gold price on whenever this piece is delivered to me. And I don't like that. I don't want to guess and think of what it's going to be. I'd rather lock my price in and know what it's going to be as opposed to guessing because we're trying to do this for our customer. We're giving them a fair deal. And the only way to give them a fair deal is know what we're going to pay and what we're going to charge. Right? I can't give them a fair deal if I don't know what I'm going to pay on it because gold price has been fluctuating, Ukraine, the war, everything's going down, wild situation. All right, so we, do have, we have a special project going. We need three Trax Charms ASAP. These are three ounces of pure 24 karat gold. For each charm, you take about one ounce of pure gold, all right? So let's go deliver this Super Rush project to our casting house. How are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Very As promised, I bought you three ounces. Three ounces. I just got them from Manhattan, um, so, wow. Actually, we have to use even our gold, because it's not enough. 
Okay, you're gonna use a little more than three ounces. Yeah, definitely more than five. Oh, because we have spruces and things yes, like that? Yes. Okay, see, three, so. Three itself has to be bigger than usual. So in reality, what, what, what we're seeing here is each pendant is um, three ounces. Each pendant is one ounce of fine gold after it's casted and, and cleaned, right? Because when you cast a piece, it has a spruce there that needs to be cut off. They have the tree there. Now the tree, they'll, they'll recycle that and reuse that, right? So um, roughly that's what it is. So you can see we gave them grain. They have they have them in bars. The reason why they have them in that irregular shaped bar is because they're reusing their trees and all the other spruces, and they just melt a regular sized bar for whatever they need, and they chop it up. Making grain is extremely difficult. Why that is is because you have the raw gold. What they do is they have a huge system, and they pour the gold in very small increments, and as it drops into a huge water uh, bucket, it turns into small little grains. So that's how you get the grain. Extremely hard to do, only done by real manufacturers and, and metal manufacturers, right? So he said that's about five ounces, right? So there we go. We have five ounces. Each ounce today is about 1950. So you think you figure about um, $9,500, give or take, right? We gave him three ounces, which is about 5,700. So he's giving us an extra two ounces for the manufacturing process, but he's going to get that gold right back in the tree and, and whatever uh, bigger spruces he cuts off. When we melted our big bulk gold bar, the machine powering our crucible was about eight times this. It was a huge refrigerator and the crucible and the way everything was going was on a huge scale, right? So what we're doing, we're doing, we had um, 212 ounces of pure gold in our bar, which equated to about, I don't know, 400 something ounces in metal. Here we're only doing five ounces. So obviously you don't need such a big operation when you're making a smaller piece, right? So one thing to mention, when we did our gold brick, there was a lot of smoke and dust and all kinds of nastiness in the air, hard to breathe, because it had a lot of impurities. This is pure gold, he has no mask, we have no mask, you're not gonna see any smoke much. It's gonna be a nice, clean burn. Crazy machine, just like a hair dryer or a dryer. just a blow dryer. Blow dryer. What would you say the percentage of pieces you're casting in 24K? It's very small, right? Not too many people are making jewelry in, no. in 24K these days. Uh, yeah, no. I think uh, definitely. Like half a percent. Half a percent, right? So we're the only ones really doing this. No one's doing this. And those are you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. <laughs> let's one thing, let's just let's let's go right back to these pieces and good to notice. Right here, you see this little piece right here? That's the end of the spruce. These three little pieces, this is what the jewelers drool over. They would love to cut even just a, a little, right here, just like this. Look, you hear them laughing? They know what's up. Just a little sum right here, that's all. A couple of these, over time, equates to a half a million dollar bar. We can never forget that, okay? There you go. A little clip, a little here, there. Nice. Fabulous. So what that essentially means is we had a little bit extra gold, right? So he gave us about half a penny weight in order to, we gave him three ounces, he's going to give us back three ounces. This way he doesn't have to make an invoice, he'll just charge us for the labor and we'll go from there. Well, we got to feed Cooper. He, we gotta check up on him. Cooper is a cat that I've had since he was a week old. He was about this big when I got him and I had to feed him with a bottle. And I used to take him to uh, work and home. That whole, you know, the, the first three months really of a cat's life are the most important to the, the development of their minds. So with Cooper, 
I really made sure that like even the whole first year of his life was very um, uh, stimulating for the mind so he could be an amazing cat in the end. And I think he is. He hangs out in the office. He's got a kill list of mice. He then, I, you know, he spends uh, summers home or outside or, you know, a lot of uh, big Cooper adventures. You got to shake him up. Sometimes you give him some nice fresh salmon. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, listen, if anybody out there watching can help, uh, you know, have to, I've always had a hard time feeding cats. I try to feed them sometimes. Uh, the, the, a variety pack of, uh, you know, some nice cat food that has good reviews, the best I could do. This wherever, but I'm sure it's not, the, it's not something uh, amazing. I'd love to have improve his diet. And if anybody has any suggestions on that for Cooper Boy, well, please, uh, you know, help us out. I want you to do a good video on Monday. All right, this is Cooper Boy, Cooper Boy. Uh, Cooper, how are you? Yeah, it's a good Yeah? This is um, uh, a beautiful link. A beautiful link. We're checking on Cooper, but we have to check on some gold chains. And are these our orders? This is the link of all links. And you have a lot of beautiful chains. Yes, this is Umid. Gonna, be You're the, the, this um, gonna be a good one for Umid is the king of chains. Are you enjoying the gold chains business? Or <laughs> I love them. Uh, well, I'd love to do a review on this, but no, no, obviously not today. I'm gonna come on in, have, have it ready. Mm. Check, check these this. are amazing links. Wow, I don't even wanna <laughs> scratch these. What a time to be to be covered in gold. You gotta give me, do I still have some gold here? Oh yeah. <laughs> I got here, here. Tracksmyc.com, and here. Umid is sourcing all of the gold chains on Tracksmyc.com. This one He's out, one of the most amazing people in the business, to be honest. This is 550 grams, 18K, yellow uh, gold, 15 uh, millimeters. Who ordered this 18K joint? One of our customers. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Listen, if you want, I don't want to touch, I don't want to make sure any other link touches any other. Mirror finish. When you're ordering on the website, tracksmyc.com, Umid, me, and Cooper are working on your order together to make sure your sh comes out perfect. So don't fucking play around. There's no one else up and down this fucking Diamond District Street. You can see every fucking corner over here. There's not a single other fucking cruise that's, that's gonna do it for you. I gotta be honest. Well, listen, Umid, God bless you. Stay healthy. God bless you, man. And let's uh, move some kilos, huh? Let's Remember our, our goal? Uh, what are we at? I wanted a kilo a day to, to be our, our goal. What are, where are we at right now? Uh, around 500, let's say. Halfway there, right? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's a kilo. Yeah, it's something. So we're, we're selling about half a kilo to a kilo a day, which is a lot of gold. But uh, I guess now we have to set a new goal. Yes, 10 sir. kilos a day. <laughs> let's do it. All right. <laughs> this isn't some teeny mopper YouTube show where we're doing some shit. This is strictly business. I'm sitting in the Diamond District. I'm trying to make money. Here's a friend of mine, Goob University. He's hustling, he's doing his thing, he's making money. Kush Poppy, he's another friend of mine. Been a friend of mine for a long time. He's trying to make money. He just copped a rolling. Ring, these guys are trying to make money. In an honest way, he's whatever he's doing for a promo, he's training people, he's doing whatever it is. And I'm doing a lot of other shit. Building a jewelry, building a factory, I'm also doing this. Views, followers, that's you. That's you watching this shit. You get a return for your eyes over here. You get to see the truth of the Diamond District, of business, and of everything else that we're doing. Got two new upgraded art pieces right here. Um, are you still calling yourself Cocaine Caviar? No, it's no. the real caviar. Though. The real caviar, all right. The real caviar, yeah. More family friendly, right? More, more marketable name. Right, right. You got three new monster pieces. Um, I'm hoping you didn't use real hundred dollar bills here. No. Right? Yeah, thank God. All right. Pretend that they are. All right. Did you sell your uh, Jetsons piece? No, I'm just bringing it somewhere. Oh, uh, all right. Okay, cool. I mean, this is an iconic piece. 
for us. So, I hate to see it go, but that's life. This is the guy that I, that I buy diamonds from right here. <laughs> he buys me this it's my landlord right here. The guy I buy diamonds from, and this is, I don't know who that is. Well, listen, three nice kilos, that might have been, uh, let me calculate, I'm not even gonna bother calculating how much, how many kilos I ran through, but it's, uh, well, I guess I might as well. Over my jewelry career, I did $220 million worth of jewelry, at least. So how do you get to that figure? Well, right now, we are at two and a half, 2.5 per month. 2.5 times 12 is 30. We're doing $30 million worth of jewelry sales a year. Now, let's do that. I've been here for 18 years. And that is going to be, okay, so 30 times 18 is $540 million. But when I started my business, my sales weren't always two, two and a half million. These are my profits. In 2006, you're seeing the numbers, gross profit, 13,000, 16,000 for a two week period. The days went on, the years went on. I went to 33, 41, then it went to 34, right? I had some losses and it went to 62, 72, 44, 35, whatever it is. So I've been gradually growing up to 2.5 million. So, um, uh, and that's 540, so you take an average half and you get to around $220 million. Out of that $220 million, half must have been gold and the other half diamonds. 2,750 kilograms of gold. That's what the f I did out here since I was 18 years old. So now I'm asked the question, what am I gonna do with the three? I'm gonna cast my jewelry. I'm gonna put it into more inventory and deliver it just like the other 2,000 kilos and make sure it's in the hands of the consumer or who needs it, in either in jewelry form, whether it's chains or they want gold coins or bouillon or whatever the hell it's gonna be, we're gonna make sure that they get it so we can hit the jackpot, motherfucker. <laughs>